All right, welcome to the newest uh, prediction video for the New Year Six podcast. Today we'll be taking on San Jose State at uh, USC, another Week Zero matchup. We are two days away. We we are so so close. Um, I think I got one more after this tomorrow, so we're we're, we're at the finish line here. So. I'm just going to do the same format as I have for previous videos, keys of the game, you know, what I think is going to work for San Jose State, USC, and give a final prediction, and, uh, you know, if you're making a bet, which way you should lean on that. So, uh, start off with San Jose State as the away team. So, um, obviously, a large talent discrepancy between San Jose State and USC. Just looking at the, the, the you know, the spread for a second before, you know, we're not going to get into that, uh, the whole part of that now, but, um, USC is a very heavy, very heavy favorite. Um, you know, they're, they're supposed to win by 30 and a half points. So, um, you know, it, 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 it's going to be very tough for San Jose State to win this game. So, uh, even the keys to the game that I have, even if it doesn't mean that San Jose State wins, it means that they've set themselves up to compete in the West over the course of the year. At least they look good enough to uh, maybe contend for the title. I think this is a, a pretty solid San Jose State team across the board. One of the upper half ones in uh, you know, Mountain West and probably in the group of five. So, you know, it's not going to be 100% of a cakewalk for USC, but it will be enough of a... Uh, enough of a warm up for them, where they're, you know the main concern is getting out of it with no injuries. So, San Jose, San Jose State um, things to look for or, or keys to the game here. I'm um, just looking at what San Jose State was good at last year. Uh, first, first of which being they are very, very good in their red zone defense. So uh, they ended up sixth in the you know, country last year in red zone defense. So if you're going to beat USC, that means if you, you know, uh, if you're going to beat USC, then that means San Jose State needs to play tight in the 20. Um, so in that red zone, they they cannot give Kale Williams and this team an inch. Um, I don't know how often San Jose or how often USC is going to be visiting the red zone by virtue of you know maybe using more of the big play bug to get themselves out of this. But if San Jose State locks down inside the 20 and inside the 10 holds them to three points instead of seven, San Jose State can can make some noise. So I look at that as, as a definitely a key to you know to San Jose State winning is just making sure that you know when when their backs are against the wall as a defense, that they hold strong, they bend, they don't break, and you know they come together to you know, help put this this USC offense away. It's a very good USC offense, obviously. Um, so that's what I look for if I'm a San Jose State fan. Uh, on top of that, you know, just making sure that the offensive line protects the quarterback this year. Um, last year, San Jose State was 123rd in sacks allowed. Uh, so probably not what you want to see. They do have a, a pretty serviceable quarterback in Sean Cordero. So, you know, not one that I'm worried about from that perspective. But definitely want to see this O-line, you know, step up in that way. It's a pretty seasoned O-line, fortunately, especially the right side. You know, guys like Anthony Pardue, Marist, uh, Palabo, and uh, Jamie Navarro. So, guys that have been there for a, while, a little while now. So, if they can if they can improve and they can take a step as an offensive line, especially their first game being against USC. So, uh, you know, Power 5 defense. I know the defense that struggled last year, but, you know, more or less, it's going to be the toughest challenge that San Jose State faces all year. So if they can, you know, if they can hold their own against San Jose State, it's a good sign of things to come for the rest of the season. It shows us that, uh, you know, it's not the end of the world that the O line has improved, and you know, at least for mine, like I think it's going to, uh, you know, it, it's a sign of better things to come, and it shows that you know, they'll be able to protect against Fresno and Boise and Air Force and all of the San Diego State. All the teams that they have on their, uh, yeah, they have their arm for the rest of the year. So I want to see that O-line get better. I want to see them uh, you know, continue to be good in the defense, and then um, you know just you know from a from a turnover perspective, keeping the ball, um, you know, with your offense and forcing takeaways as a defense. So San Jose State was very good at that last year. They were sixth in 
uh, in and out of college. So you know, it shows that their defense was getting the correct takeaways, that their offense was holding up the ball. If they can do that against USC this year, that will create problems. Um, you know, it means Cordero is not turning the ball over, which is what you want to see from your starter. It means that, you know, their defense is making key plays. And if you can get a couple of those key plays against this USC team, they may be scratching their head at the end of this. If Cordero's holding on to the ball, making smart reads, and just being a game manager against a team that's vastly talented, that's... That's big for them. So I think that's a that's a you know very important factor, especially if we're looking at progression for the course of the season. Um, you know, I don't need to have a, a plus two or plus three turnover margin for this team you know, coming out of this game. That would be incredible if it was, but I don't think it's realistic. But as long as you're not dipping the negative, you know, I, I think uh, you know, you're gonna keep you're, you're gonna keep your team in it. So um, just making sure the red zone defense is st- still stacked, the O line protects the QB, and you know, you're you're keeping the ball in your offense's hand, and you know the defense are making big plays. So that's why I think San Jose State's going to need to do if they are going to, you know, pull a rabbit out of their hat and get this done. Uh, but now we're going to turn it over to USC. Huge expectations for USC this year, not just to win the Pac-12, but you know, to make the playoffs and win a national championship. That's, that's the goal out there in you know, in SoCal. But, you know, this is that first glimpse into what this team is going to be. Is the defense going to be better? Is Caleb Williams going to, you know, return to Heisman form again this year? We're going to find out on Saturday. So what I want to see from uh, USC is they've made a lot of additions in the transfer portal, specifically on defense. So, obviously, that defense last year was pretty abysmal. Um, there's no nice way to say that. Um, you know, it, it just kind of is what it is. But you know, the, the D-line looks significantly improved. You've know, you got uh, Anthony Lucas coming in from uh, Texas a and you got Bear Alexander from Georgia. you got Crown Barnes, or Crown Bars from, from Arizona. Uh, Jamil Muhammad coming in from uh, Georgia State by way of Vanderbilt. So a lot of new faces, a lot of new opportunities and talent for this D-line specifically. I know, you know Ma- Jimmy Omaha kind of plays that, that edge rush spot. So we'll, we'll, we'll loop him in with the D-line for, for the sake of argument here. I, I thought about including the O-line in this, um, but I really want to focus on the D-line knowing that, um, you know, it was, it was a struggle for USC last year. Um, their rushing defense was, you know, I mean, below average, it's not as bad as other parts of this defense, and we'll get into that in a second, but the defense as a whole, you know, didn't put up much of a fight. They didn't really need to, knowing how good the offense was when you have, again, the best offensive player in the country. You know, your defense can take a little bit of a step back. I think fans around the world and, you know, fans of USC want to see that defense get better. They want to see Lincoln Riley make those changes. He's gotten in, he's gone to the portal to make those changes. Now it's a matter of you know, applying them. Now it's a matter of you know you got your guys, put them in your system, and make it work. So I want to see you know who of these guys you know turns in and makes a move for themselves. Um, I think Anthony Lucas is one of those kids from that you know that, that stacked up, you know AM class. Maybe he's the year before. Eric's in a lot of hype around in Georgia, so I'm just using my SEC background to you know, tell you that these kids are, are talented. Um, but will they work in USC system? Will they work in this defense? Time will tell, but you know, the, the old system wasn't working. you got to try something new. So I'm really interested to see how these guys fit together, how they play together, and you know how they look uh, you know, coming out of week zero. Other than that, getting into actual games or, or getting into actual things that were accomplished last year that we want to see replicated this year, so talk a lot about San Jose State, their ability to protect and bomb force takeaways. Uh, USC was in that same vein. If if San, if San Jose State was sixth in the country last year, USC was the best team in the country last year. So having the Heisman winners, your QB, goes a long way in making that happen. Uh, I know the defense struggled, but um, you know, they, they, they got turnovers when they needed to get them, whether it be forced fumbles or interceptions. So... 
I want to continue to see that. I want to see Caleb Williams protect the ball, you know, play smart. You know, you don't need to go full Heisman mode. You don't need to, you know, you don't need to make this your signature game if you want to, you know, if, if you want back to back. This is not going to be it. Not when you have Oregon on the schedule, not when you have Utah on the schedule, not when you have Notre Dame on the schedule. There's, there's more to come down the line. So, um, yeah, I think just you know, playing smart, keeping the ball in your hands. If you can force uh, you know, a, bad, a bad pass out of the court arrow, if you can you know, hit someone hard and jar the ball, ball loose, that's fantastic. But I definitely want to see uh, Bill Williams just, just play smart. You know, run, run his game. Don't let San Jose, you know, change your game plan. You know what you do. You know what to do. They're, they they outclass them. They out talent in every way, shape, or form. No one's giving San Jose State a chance. And you know, Caleb Williams just needs to play his game, and you know, the rest will fall into place. Um, looking long term and looking at improvements that need to be made to this team coming out of last year, I already talked about defense as a whole, but. I want to see this passing defense take a step up. Um, this passing defense last year was 112th in the country. That's unacceptable for a team that was on the verge of making the playoffs. If, if they beat Utah in their championship game last year, UFC is that number four seed instead of Ohio State. I mean, like, I got to look at it that way, and you know, you got to think that passing defense is better. Even if they get up to if they get up to the level that their rushing defense was and their rushing defense makes a move, this is a dangerous USC team. Um, you know, USC last year, passing defense 112, rushing defense was 80. So if we get passing defense to 80 and we get rushing defense to 50, you know, it, it's it's a mediocre defense, but with the offense you've got there, it'll work. So I want to see their passing defense improve. I want to see... Um, you know, I want to see them shut down Cordero. I want to see them, you know, find a way to, uh, you know, get rid of this passing attack. You know, San Jose State is is quite good when it comes to passing the ball. Um, they are a they are a pass heavy uh, pass heavy offense. Uh, you know, even if it is a spread option, you know, they, they have the quarterback to run it you know, more pass heavy. So it's a good first test for USC. Uh, it's a it's a scheme that they need to face early on in the season. But at the same time, it's not at the talent level that they'll see elsewhere in the conference. So I want to see what this passing defense can do. I want to see if they make strides in, in year two of, uh, of Lincoln Riley. And you know, I want to see them you know, put it together and at least look like a potentially cham- championship caliber defense. So um, that's what I'm looking for out of USC. Again, you know, I, I don't think this is going to be you know, particularly competitive. But you know, I think we all kind of, you know, I think we all kind of understood that coming into week zero. But um, looking at the, you know, the, the the betting lines real quick. So USC is the favorite, obviously. That that is not a surprise. Um, they are favored by thirty and a half, and the the total is sixty six and a half. So on my end, I like USC to win. Well, obviously, I, I would be. Stunned if someone picks San Jose State to win, um, not as a joke or a meme or whatever. Uh, if you really believe in them, you know, I, I, I understand where you're coming from because I don't see it. But I mean, USC to win, I'm actually going to take San Jose State to cover. I'll tell, um, I don't like large spreads in general. I don't like 30-plus point spreads, 25-plus um, point spreads. I tend to go against that by virtue of what do you think is more likely to happen? Uh, this team goes out there and dominates someone from start to finish, or that you know they may be laying an egg for a quarter or two. To me, that that's more likely. I do it with you know, with Bama when they get a thirty-eight point spread. I do it with Georgia when they get a forty-one point spread. Like it's not anti USC. It's anti gigantic spread because that's much easier said than done. So I'm gonna take USC. Um, to win, I'll take San Jose State to uh, to cover the spread, and I'll take the under on the 66 and a half. And that's the same deal of I don't like um, high spreads or low spreads. Um, I tend to pick the over when when Iowa gets a 34 point spread or something ridiculous like that, because again the the odds are that uh, if someone comes alive. Uh, I think you know in this case it's gonna be hard to pop 66 and a half. 
So my final score prediction, I'm gonna do USC 41 and I'm gonna do San Jose State 41. So a com like a comfortable win, but again, I need to see the defense improve for USC. I need to see you know, what the, you know, what 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 was missing last year and is it found this year? Until I know that piece, I'm gonna I'm gonna lean on the defense not being elite. Uh, the offense is still going to be there. A 41 point game doesn't matter if it's you know San Jose State or or you know Georgia. That's that's a good game. So I think USC wins. They're comfortable. You just want to get out of this game with no injuries. Um, you know you got you got bigger fish to fry down the line. It doesn't matter if you win. You know, 33 or 300. As long as you get out of it, as long as you're comfortable, as long as you're safe and you have a plan for week one, you'll be all right. So that's my thoughts. USC uh, goes to an easy, you know, easy victory, just not going to be as big as what the experts say it is. And, uh, you know, a little bit under on that 66 and a half. So uh, if you're going to make a bet, I'm leaning that, um, that San Jose State to the covers is the one that I like a little bit more. Um, just because even if it does get a little larger of a margin than what I have, you're still going to be in the 30 and a half. So, all right, that concludes this, uh, you know, this preview of uh, San Jose State at USC. Tune in tomorrow for our last week zero, uh, you know, preview and prediction. It'll be FIU at Louisiana Tech. Um, the quote unquote late night game, the 9, the 9 p.m. kickoff, the one that honestly, you know, it's going to be a tough one to watch. Um, you know, it, it's you know not a whole lot of marquee matchups down there, but this is the the uh, you know the joy of week zero. You get to talk about teams that you don't really get to talk about that often during the season. So I'm looking forward to covering it. I'm looking forward to seeing how all of these teams do this week. And we're just going to taste of what college football is looking like. We're almost back, and I'm really uh, you know excited to get us started. So thank you all for watching. Thanks for your time. Let me know your thoughts below. And tune in tomorrow.